Yo, man, Power fans, people who watch Power, hashtag Power TV, hashtag who the fuck shot ghosts. So this was the midseason finale titled No One Can Stop Me. Uh, it was about an hour and a half long. I'm not going to break it down scene for scene. It's way too much time. But um, in this episode, and Ghost clearly says it over and over, and his cocky, arrogant, is full because he's in his moment of triumph. Ghost is feeling himself at an all-time high because... He just became the lieutenant governor, and he's officially clean. He's legit. The U.S. feds can't get anything on him. Everyone is just, <laughs> everyone's hating on him. He's he's cleaned his slate. He's a, he's achieved his goal from season one to go a legit 100% clean. And in this episode, he tells several people, uh, rather it's Tasha, Tariq, Tommy, uh, anyone, you know, I'm legit. You know, you can't stop me. No one's going to fucking stop me. He tells Tate, he tells everyone. So in the beginning, <clears throat> before they can announce him as the lieutenant governor with this white lady who wants him to run with her to, so she could get the black vote, she says, look, we need you to have the site for the Queen's Child Project so that it can be a good counterpart when they bring up your drug dealing history and that murder case that you beat. So he has to go find a site ASAP. So he goes to his old neighborhood in Queens and he goes to this old bar that he used to hang out. And he meets this guy named Gabe, Uncle Gabe, his father's one of his father's old time best friends. And then at first, Gabe is kind of hesitant to remember who Ghost is. And then eventually they reminisce. And, you know, see, you don't really know about Ghost's character. And that's the crazy thing about the show is he's the nucleus and the star of the show. But you know the least about his personal life and his past compared to everyone else. You don't know Ghost's parents. You don't know anything. <laughs> you know, so Ghost convinces uncle gabe that he can take this bar and he could turn it into like a community development center and he can let kids showcase their you know their arts and their talents on that stage so he buys it and then the next day he's at his penthouse or the hotel room and ramona calls him and ramona's like turn on channel one news and they just announced him as the lieutenant governor <laughs> so he's feeling himself and, but at the same time, he's nervous because of his past, and he thinks his past is going to haunt him forever. And then that's when the illusion of Angela comes. And he sees Angela, and Angela and him are talking, and they're having that closure. And she's like, don't, it's okay to, to love someone else, because he's starting to feel for Ramona. I don't care for Ramona, but whatever. Um, and he's t she's telling him, like, you know, just don't let her know your side. She's not from the neighborhood. So that's Angela's last, you know, Angela Valdez. That's her last moment on power. And you see a few more of these illusions or hallucinations, excuse me, as the series, I mean, as the season, go, as the show goes on. And of course, um, <laughs> Tasha's pissed. Uh, they go to the, he goes to the gravesite to see Raina. And she's like, nigga, I'm here every week. And that's when he tells her, because Ghost is feeling himself. And he's like, you know, I'm releasing you from the marriage. You can be Tasha Green now. And it pisses Tasha off, you know. And then he even brings up the idea that he feels like Tariq should turn himself in for the Raymond Jones kill. When he told Tariq and Tasha he would take the rep. But he's feeling because he's about to be lieutenant governor, he can't afford to take the rep. So he's telling Tariq and Tasha, let Tariq turn himself in. He's 16 years old. He can go do a boot camp or some kind of stuff like that, and he'll be fine. And that's the final straw for Tariq, because now Tariq's looking at him like, you're a liar. You can't even keep your word to protect your own son. So Tariq's done with him. Tasha's done with him. Um, he goes to speak with Tommy at the warehouse. And, you know, he's telling him, look, I had nothing, nothing to do with Lakeisha. And it seems like uh, two brothers arguing. And then these bullets start to fly. <laughs> and they start, you know, taking cover and going after who's shooting them. And then... Tommy goes inside the warehouse and Ghost hears a shot and Ghost is like, oh shit. And he goes in there and he sees a body. He thinks it's Tommy or somebody else. So Tommy's thinking Ghost set him up yet again. So that's another person who's like, fuck Ghost. So throughout this episode, Ghost is giving everyone his ass to kiss. But people are having, everyone has an equal amount of reason to hate him at this point. You know, he confronts Tate. Tate looks like he's going through hell. And he's like, you know what? You're you, you a fucking loser. You're used to losing. He's just flossing on Tate. And Tate's just irate. <laughs> and, you know, he's got Ramona now. He's got the campaign. He's got the Queen's Child. I mean, he, he did everything to stop Ghost and nothing has worked. Um, and then it goes to the, the U.S. attorneys, the federal agents. Bianca has now grown to have an obsession with Ghost the same way as Cooper Sacks. And in the last episode, when Sacks stole that phone and plotted it in his hotel, she gets a search warrant. 
they go into his hotel without him knowing, get the phone, and they present it to Warner, the boss. Warner is like, hold the fuck up. How did you get this phone? You got it through Saks. Saks is no longer a, an employee with us. This is illegal. Do you know what the fuck you're doing? So now Saks has got them all fucked up because now Saks can exploit the fact that they allowed someone who's not law enforcement to crack down on a, a major drug dealing case. So <laughs> a murder case. So everyone's all twisted up. And Saks and the former black lady who used to work there, she's, you know, defending him against Warner and Bianca and Bianca's like you fucking played me he was like yeah I had to do what I had to do because Sax that was his game plan to screw over his employer and his former employer and to get ghosts but it, it doesn't work and because everything is all fucked up now the black lady tells Sax St. Patrick is gonna walk away because you don't have any criminal you don't have enough incriminating evidence on him you can't prove that he killed Terry Silver the shoe prints and the phone isn't enough you can't turn that phone in because if you turn it in, they're going to know that it was illegally received and plotted in his in his apartment, his hotel. So he grabs a gun and I'm thinking for a second because he's drinking shots of yak. I'm thinking, oh, Sax is going to kill himself, but he doesn't. Um, Dre's bitch ass. And let me tell you about this nigga, Dre. This nigga is like a cat. This nigga got nine lives. This nigga escapes death more than anybody. He's like a roach in the projects. You got to slap him around four or five times to kill him. This nigga comes to Ghost because he's got intel on Tariq because Tariq is working for him. He got that brick from Tariq, got that brick for him. So he comes into Ghost's office and he's like, yo, man, I need some money. I got to get out of town ASAP. You know, everyone's after me. And Ghost is like, nigga, I ain't got time to be fucking with you. He was like, man, I need it, man. Come on, come on. He's like, all I got is 250 And he's like, well, I'll take it. He said, you know what? You just don't want to be gangster. You ain't nothing but a little bitch. Always asking for my help. <laughs> And I'm like, I think that's what everyone thinks. And um, he says, yo, meet me at such and such and I'll give it to you. And he's like, how can I trust you? He says, nigga, you ain't got no choice but to trust me. You coming to me asking me for money. So when, of course, Ghost sets him up, he gets locked up on site. And now Ghost runs into Vincent, the Italian dude. And he's like, yo, can you get a burner on the inside? So the phone gets in jail and Ghost talks to 2-Bit and Spanky, Tommy's people who got knocked on the last episode. And then he's like, yo, he's going to set it up so that they could kill Dre on the inside. But lo and behold, this nigga's got nine lives. Bianca finds out he's in jail and she is all time desperate. She goes up there and she get, convinces him to lie and say that he was dead the night that Ghost killed Terry Silver and tells him that he can get out of jail that same night. And it happens. So he escapes death once again. I'm like, oh, my God, I thought we was going to finally see this little nigga get clipped. <laughs> so, so it's just the the when they do kill this character, it's gonna be a big payoff because they've been making us wait for at least two three years now for this little nigga to get killed, and it just it won't happen. He's invincible. Um, <clears throat> uh, who else? Let me see. Now Angela's sister, Paz, she comes back. Uh, rightfully so. You bring Angela back in an illusion, a hallucination. You got to bring her back. She's still hasn't gotten over her sister's death and she knows that Jamie knows who killed her sister and it's Tommy but he won't tell her his loyalty to Tommy will not allow him to tell her the truth and that's what breaks her and that's when she goes out of her way to go back to law enforcement to try to get him down because she knows he knows who killed her sister so she's upset so you got Tate, Paz, Tommy, Sax. Uh, Dre, Tariq, Tasha, everyone's got a fucking beef with Ghost, and they all have equal amount of motivation. I can't say one hates him more than the other. All of them. Um, at one point, Raina even comes back in a hallucination for the first time since season four, and she's telling him how the family has to stop lying to each other. And that it's okay. Tariq needs to pay for what he did. Look at what happened to me. I'm dead. <laughs> so, you know, that right there convinces Ghost's ghost that is the right thing for Tariq to turn himself in and learn his lesson and Tariq ain't trying to hear that so finally um ghost is at club truth and he's just soaking in all of his luster and glory and like I said this whole episode he was just feeling himself and he has one last hallucination and it's fucking Kanan and one of the fan favorites we haven't seen Kanan since last year and Kanan they had this close-up shot where you see him dead in his face and he's basically telling them nigga you always gonna be ghost 
You can put on this front and this suit all you want. You always going to be ghost, nigga. Everybody hates you. Tasha, Tariq, <laughs> Tommy, yada, yada, yada. And then the illusion goes away. And, you know, he's trying to tell Kanan, that ain't me no more, yada, yada, yada. But it is him. It's like Clark Kent, Superman. You know, Ghost is always going to be more of Ghost than he is James St. Patrick. And you know, it, that's the way he views himself as James St. Patrick because he thinks he's a legit. <laughs> but everyone else still sees him as Ghost. And um, then they show this scene where everyone's got their guns locked and loaded and they're all headed, they're all headed to, uh, to the club to kill Ghost. And Bianca's outside, and then she hears the gunshot, and then bow. And then you see Ghost falling in dramatic slow motion with a gunshot to his chest, and he falls to the off the balcony. Hashtag who shot Ghost. Now, this was an episode that had a lot of hallucinations, so I don't know <laughs> if that was just a dream or not. Um, everyone wasn't all coming at him after once. That's the way it shows it on screen. It's just showing you how many enemies that this nigga has. And that there is no team ghost. He is team ghost. Everyone's after him. He's it's, he's one on seven or whatever right now. Um, but it was so many hallucinations. I don't know if they really shot him or not. But it is a great cliffhanger from the writers. You got to sit on this for two months. Um, but like I say, I have a hard time be believing that they're going to kill the star of the show with five episodes left. Because as much as the show is good and the characters... I don't think the interest is there if you kill Ghost this early with five episodes left. They got to be careful with that. I don't think they're dumb enough to kill him off this early. I think he will die eventually, last episode, because that's what these anti-hero shows do. You know, Walter White died. Tony Soprano most likely died. Uh, Jax Teller died. You know, so I always thought Ghost would die, but I don't think it would happen in this fashion. But you got to wait. You know, it'll be Christmas, Thanksgiving, and all that will pass by the time we figure out. So... You know, hashtag who shot ghost? Who do you think shot ghost, man? Let me know. It could have been anybody. It could have been Dre. A lot of people think it's Tariq. Um, obviously, we know it ain't Bianca. Uh, I, it could have been Sax. You know, I think his obsession with ghosts is at an all-time fucking... It's, it's ridiculous how obsessed he is with ghosts. But let me know what y'all think, man. Hashtag who shot ghost? Power, mid-season finale. Hit that like button. I'm out.